Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, and welcome to the continuing deep dive into the depths of Shadows of Brimstone. And on this episode, we are continuing our coverage of the expansions, and we are looking at the Tradera, the Other World Deluxe expansion. This is an absolutely massive expansion. This, think of it as a whole other world to explore. And additionally, it comes with a deluxe enemy pack built in to the expansion. Now, aesthetically, this is probably my least favorite expansion. It's kind of drab. Um, I don't find the world of Tradera to be very interesting, at least for me. It's a little on the kind of like Warhammer 40K, you know, all war, all the time side. And I just don't find that kind of thing very appealing. But the game does add a lot. And I know it's a fan favorite too, because it does really up the difficulty. And if you have the couple of the core sets and you're finding the game too easy, you might want to add this into your rotation and I think you'll find that the game becomes much more difficult with the enemies and stuff that this adds. It also adds a lot of fiddliness. There are some modular advanced rules from this set that you can add in that make the combat a little more complex, but it's kind of a double-edged sword in that it also makes the combat more drawn out with rolling even more dice and some more fiddly bits. So it is an expansion that I don't use very often. But it still has some pretty cool things. I've got a bunch of old model parts in here, a bunch of old... Uh, Warhammer stuff in this box, so that's what you heard sloshing around. So, all right, so Tradera Deluxe Expansion. On the war-torn battlefields of Tradera, legions of alien soldiers patrol the ruins of their once great cities, waging war on each other for generations. The battle-scarred nations of Tradera use Darkstone to fuel their engines of death, polluting the world with radiation and clouds of toxic gas. There are treasures to be found amidst the devastation. Weapons and technology advanced beyond reckoning by brutal centuries of warfare. So I wanted to thank a couple of the people who reminded me on my uh, Cinder video about why, or was it Cinder or Deluxe or the uh, Derelict? I can't remember, but why I was couldn't remember why the Tradaran soldiers were in the other expansions. And I had completely forgotten that, about their lore. And now they are like, super addicted to Darkstone and they want to get it all to build these powerful weapons. So they have sent their legions of soldiers out to the other worlds to conquer them and to take over their Darkstone. So here you have your typical box, your contents, a nice picture of all the things you're going to be getting. And probably astute viewers will notice that the cover art actually does look a little different than the last couple and that's because it is actually um, done by a different artist than the last couple we've looked at so here we have the box cover illustration it was done by Corey Hubble and the illustrations for this expansion were done by Corey Hubble Brian Snotty Matthew Morgan Morano and Jack Scott Hill. So Jason's uh, brother, who also helps run the company, he does some of the art and he also did some of the miniature painting. So here we have our adventure and rule book going over all of the details of the stuff you're going to be getting. On the war torn industrial age battlefields of Tradera, legions of alien soldiers patrol the ruins. Yeah, that's what we just read. Sorry about that. <laughs> we have a game contents. Uh, a little overview of the map tiles that you're going to be getting with the um, 
cards, six new missions. There are three, four different enemies that we're going to be taking a look at. We've got the Trudaren Lieutenant, the Trudaren Legionnaires, the Trudaren Mutants, and the Z4 Grenadiers. So you get a good variety of enemies in this expansion. You also get some uh, cover models if you want to play with cover. Uh, radiation markers, landmines, toxic clouds, and poison. The world of Tradera is uh, very dangerous. Some more stun markers, some patrol markers. So for your world card for Tradera, you have the war zone. Whenever you hold back the darkness roll is failed in Tradera, add a patrol marker to the depth track and roll for discovery. So as you are exploring more and more of this world, moving deeper and deeper into Tradera, you will have a chance to add these patrol markers to the side of your board. You make a die roll, you consult the result, and on a certain result, you're going to be ambushed. So it's kind of a cool, I like that concept of like this threat of wandering monsters that are wandering enemies that are going to ambush you as you get deeper into their world. I think that's a pretty cool concept, and I wish that was actually in other expansions. You get some weapons of war markers, which I have forgotten to take out, unfortunately. They're back on the shelf, but you do get, uh, well, there are some pictures. You do get some tokens of some like big machine guns and cannons and different kinds of dark stone weapons that you can set up and use. And this expansion actually uses quite a bit of its map overlays during the games, which is nice. And then of course you also get your additional encounters that are never used. Um, you get some different scavenge cards in this map. It goes over some detail about radiation. There is radiation on the map because of how war torn the uh, the area is the environment is super hostile in this expansion there is a really cool dark chasm um, mine map card that you actually have to walk around i will sometimes make a house rule where you can make an agility test of a six and if you do that then you can jump over it especially if it will mean something cool will happen sometimes i will incorporate some of the role-playing rules from Warhammer Quest, that style, into my games of Shadows of Brimstone, just to make them a little more exciting um, while you are playing the game. It also comes with two enemies from one of the core sets, so if you don't have that core set, you will get your tokens to use, and those will be for the Trench Spiners and the Gorged Slashers, and you'll get your... Um, your enemy cards in the back of the book here as you can tell like i said before some of the a lot of the enemies in the original core sets were really boring and the void spiders had actually absolutely no abilities which is really bizarre i mean a spider without a webbing ability in a game hello uh so i actually wrote on mine i made up a web ability and i gave them a thing called wall walk which means that they can walk through other models and they're constantly picking new targets each turn so i just made up a couple special abilities for my void spiders it goes into some uh, details on your Tradaran enemies your different factions how they have uh you have to draw a different faction card when you first face it to see what faction you are facing off against most of the Tradaran enemies are ranged so they do have shootout they have shootout from cover they have an assault ability there are shatter grenades that can stun you. It goes into some detail about your Tradaran lieutenants. So there are three different types of lieutenants uh, sh shown here by this red, blue, and green icons. We'll take a look at the cards in a minute. They can issue battlefield orders to boost their soldiers. One of them could be a field marshal, which is an even more powerful lieutenant. And then the uh, field marshals will get some master forged war gear. It's very powerful items. And then we have this weapons of war. So you have different uh, types of guns that can have different crew members working them. You have a template for a flamethrower. Some of the weapons will have cooldown. They will have arcs of fire. And another advanced rule is cover. And it tells you how to take different kinds of cover and the kind of dice that you're going to be rolling for when you are in partial or full cover. 
if you were to take the cover rules from this set and add them to the building rules from the Frontier um, Town expansion, you could play this as a pretty good little skirmish game. If only the models had a point value, I'm sure a lot of people would kind of be into that. You also have hostile environments, so there are toxic clouds that are going to drift around the map on this chart here. You have to deal with those. There's poison, there are landmines, and there's acid rain. So, like I said, very, very hostile environment in this game or in this expansion. And then you're going to have your six uh, missions, foothold, your toxic purge, your battlefield recon, front lines, guns of war, and then finally the doomsday. And then we get a nice bit of lore here for our other world. Uh, a distant uh, a distant world on the far reaches of the galaxy. Tradera and its alien inhabitants are not unlike those of Earth. It is a planet with vast oceans teeming with life, rolling hills and volcanic mountains, polar ice caps and lush jungles full of birds and beasts, not to mention the sprawling industrial complexes and massive urban cities. But most importantly, it has a population of over 2 billion citizens a civilized and intelligent people limited only by their ambition and imagination. At least, that's what it looked like 200 years or so ago, before the dark times, before the war. And since then, it has just been non-stop waging war. You have the industrial age of technology, the different warring nations, the discovery of Darkstone, which was the downfall, and which turned their environment into a toxic wasteland. And here we have our enemy overview with the Tredarian Legionnaires. Get some lore on them. The Z4 Grenadiers, the Tredarian Mutants, and the Lieutenants. And here we have our Nations of Tredera, which you are going to learn all about the different factions. The Union, the Core, the Carcharis Confederacy, the Royal Foundry, Republic of Tarkon, and the Liberation Army. So yeah, this expansion does add a lot. And if you're looking to up the complexity level of your games of Shadows of Brimstone, this is probably a expansion that you want to prioritize. Just know that it is also going to up the fiddliness of the game. So you do get a very large number of cards in the game. You get your encounters, your two maps, and some darkness cards, artifacts, and then you're going to get some new scavenge cards and a whole deck of cards to, to modify your enemies while you are playing, basically. So the first thing let's look at is the uh, mine deck. So this is a game where you have you start in the mines, then you go to your Tradera, so you can mix it in easily with any of your other mines. You're going to have uh, four rooms without any special encounters. And then you're going to have your rooms with all of your special encounters, like the Awakening of the Beast. A massive pit is carved into the center of the floor here, with a makeshift gate covering the top. Whatever is down there, someone doesn't want it getting out. And that map tile is pretty cool looking. I like that one quite a bit. It has that really cool uh, grate over that pit. And there are Falling Bodies, Carrion Beetle Infestation, Time's Lantern, Rusty Lever, Egg Nest. I think this one had a pretty cool look to it as well. There's something alive down there and something is stuck. And then the other world, of course, is Tradera. And you're going to have the normal rooms that don't have any advanced encounters but there's a chance for them to have pieces of terrain that you can put on the map if you want to play with terrain and you're going to get your boring passages just like all the other expansions there and then you're going to get your selections of map tiles that have your um, advanced encounters landmines crumbling infrastructure Burst pipes flood the area and down electrical lines arc as they dance across the ground. So this is a very dangerous tile here with lots of nasty things that can 
hinder your heroes, battle plans, uh, radiation leaks, abandoned ruins. The area is littered with wreckage and rubble from crumbling buildings. There may be something of use in all this devastation. Heavy artillery, terrible experiments, and calm relay station. So one thing that this game does add different is its own scavenge uh, deck. So the core sets all come with the scavenge deck and you basically use the scavenge deck and wherever you're playing, you use the same scavenge deck. Unless you're playing with Tradera expansion, then you get to use a new scavenge deck. And this is cool because it's like the darkness deck. These cards all have really good, unique art. And just you will find, you have a better chance of finding different kinds of things in Tradera. Probably to reflect that, you know, there's this constant war and technology being left scattered around the battlefield. And speaking of darkness cards, you will get five darkness cards in this set. Long Years of Ruin, Kill or Be Killed, Watched, Wretched Form of Life, Search and Destroy, and A Dark Future. You will also get, of course, a whole bunch of encounters. Now these, I do have some of the other expansions mixed in, some of the uh, card expansions mixed in, so you don't get this huge stack. But you do get a nice variety and you can add more to it. Toxic waste, burned bodies, fallout. So as you can see, all very much war themed kinds of encounters. And so if you're into that kind of stuff, especially if you're into like weird war two style, um, you will appreciate this expansion quite a bit. And that is especially true with the artifacts. So lots of like war gear, gloves and gas masks. I really like this, this Tradarian, Tradarian field manual that has pictures of all of the enemies from the um, uh, original core sets. Like they're studying them. Really great artistic and lore detail there. Very cool. Maps and trench coats, grenades, thermal charges, harnesses, a void saber, a thump gun. That is very cool. Surgeon's kit, a trench pistol, a trench shovel, a K1 dragon fire thrower. So yeah, pretty cool. But the main draw of this expansion is the enemies and the kinds of things that you get with your enemies. So you will have different kinds of lieutenants. You will, they will have different kinds of battle orders. The Tradaran factions that you will be facing. The lieutenants will often be armed with a master forged war gear. And the Tradarans themselves may use these very powerful weapons of war. So you get an information card about your um, field marshal, which is your uber lieutenant. And then how they will use their battlefield orders. When you face off against a lieutenant, you see what kind of lieutenant it is. A battle lieutenant, a comms officer lieutenant, or a mutant lieutenant. And each one is gonna have different stat bonuses on these cards. And you will take these battlefield orders and they will match up with the icons. And these are kind of like military spells, I'd say. You know, these are these are powers that, that each of the different kinds of lieutenants can have, such as calling an airstrike, a shock attack, a charge, springing traps, opening fire, take cover. All kinds of different things there and then these are very powerful very cool tools of war that they will use a scorch pistol a void saber campaign medals first legion trench coat and captain's arc light pistol i guess this expansion also kind of reminds me of like the brotherhood of steel in in fallout a little bit a little 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 on the fallout side then you, you will have your uh, special cards for each of the factions that will add different elements. So you never really face off against the same kind of Tredaran soldiers twice in a row. You have the Core Liberation Army, the Royal Foundry, the Union, 
the Karkaris Confederacy, and the Republic of Tarkon. And finally, you will get a deck of cards for your weapons of war. And these are very powerful weapons that the Trigarians will use. A Frag Launcher, the K1 Dragon Fire Thrower, the XN Banshee Shockwave Gun, Darkstone Laser Destroyer, the Maximus Heavy Machine Gun, range of 16, shots 4, damage 2, an X-73 force field generator, a T-9 radio transmitter, and a light machine gun. Very cool weapons there. And then you have your uh, lieutenant card here, and the lieutenant um, mini there, using his saber. Yeah, pretty cool. I like these guys. They look neat. I like their helmets a lot, actually. I think, I think the helmets are the coolest part of their, of their model. They have a specialty that you're going to draw the lieutenant card. They have a commander. They might have battlefield orders. They're armed with trench pistols. They have a range. They hit on a three up on range. That's pretty deadly. Uh, four up on melee. Their health scales with heroes, with how many heroes. There's the elite chart and then their brutal side there. And then you have your normal everyday Tredaren Legionnaire soldiers here. Again, I really like the helmet, especially with that hood on. I think it looks pretty cool. They have their carbines with a range of 10. The shots scale according to the uh, posse level of your party of heroes. That damage of 4 for the basic gun. That, that is very brutal. Uh, shatter grenades. They hit on a 4 up for range, 5 up on melee. They only have 6 health and a defense of 3, so they're not too tough once you hit them. Then there is their elite chart there, and there is the brutal side. All right, then you're going to get these bad boys. So once the uh, Legionnaires have been around Darkstone too much, of course, they're going to mutate into the Tredaren mutants and become an alien mutant Tredaren. Darkstone radiation, they have endurance of four, they regenerate. Uh, they have a critical hit of Frenzy. They have quite a bit of health, but zero defense. They don't have any ranged. They are all melee. They are going to roll six dice, though. Wow, that is a lot of dice to hit. There's the elite chart, and then the brutal side. And then, finally, oh, let's take a look at those guys real quick. So, just like the Tredaren look, but they're kind of, their clothes are a little messed up. And then they have these tentacles. And then finally, we have our Z4 Grenadiers. These are probably my favorite minis in this set. I really like how chunky they are. Uh, these are the big boys. And they're slow, but they have Darkstone Radiation as well. Uh, blast suits, Hurt Locker suits, uh, thermal chargers that they're going to throw. They hit on a 5-up in range, a 4-up melee. They only roll 2 combat dice. They have 6 health. They do have 4 defense, probably because of their armor there. And there's the elite chart and then their brutal side. And then finally, just a spattering of tiles here. We'll take a quick look. Like I said, it's just the other world here doesn't really do much for me. It doesn't, it doesn't just like stoke my imagination. I think some of the mine tiles in here are interesting, especially this tile here, because it always comes, if this tile comes out, it always comes with a way around attached to it. So it becomes kind of a more interesting tile. But the Tredaren side, beyond the dangerous uh, like radiation and the environmental dangers, I just don't find it very evocative. Just look at a couple more of the tiles real quick. But like I said, if you are looking for an expansion that will add some difficulty, that will add a little bit more to your combat if you're finding the combat a little um, a little too easy, then this is an expansion that you probably want to take a look at. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the Tradera Deluxe Otherworld expansion, and I hope you enjoyed this video. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.